In this lesson, we'll review some old ideas about polygons from your middle school math experiences and take it to the next level with some constructions. Because we're doing some constructions, you will need a compass and straight edge, so if you don't have yours handy, go ahead and pause the video right now and retrieve your compass and straight edge. Remember from middle school that a polygon is a simple closed shape made up of line segments. The simplest and most basic polygon that we know of is the three-sided polygon, the triangle. A regular polygon, remember, is a polygon that has all of its sides congruent and all of its angles are congruent. Polygons are named by the number of sides they have. For instance, a three-sided polygon is a triangle, whereas a six-sided polygon is a hexagon, and an eight-sided uh, polygon is an octagon. You should know the names of the polygons in that list. If we have a polygon with a number of sides greater than 12, we would call that an n-gon. For instance, a polygon with 23 sides would be a 23-gon. A little bit about the anatomy of the polygon. We talk about sides and vertices. Sides are the line segments that make up our polygon, whereas vertices is the plural of vertex, and the vertex is the point where two of the sides come together and meet. So again, the sides would be the line segments. And the vertex would be the point where two of the sides meet. It's important to know that the number of sides and the number of vertices will always be equal. So a polygon with three sides will have three vertices, whereas a polygon with ten sides will have ten vertices. In this unit, we'll be talking about interior and exterior with respect to a polygon. Just like interior paint is used to paint the inside of your house, the interior of a polygon is located within the polygon. And just like exterior paint would be used to paint the outside of the house, when we're talking about the exterior of a polygon, we're referring to the space that's outside of the polygon. In the next part of the lesson, we're going to go ahead and focus on inscribed polygons. Now, an inscribed polygon is going to be a polygon that has each of its vertices on a circle. So again, it's a polygon with each vertex on the circle. We're going to construct some of these, but I'm going to start just by a general picture of what this would look like. If we start with a circle, we want to draw an inscribed triangle each one of the vertices of our triangle would have to be on the circle. Once we find each one of those vertices, we could then take our straight edge and go ahead and connect them. So that triangle would be inscribed in the circle. Another way to look at this would be to say that the circle circumscribes the triangle. So that word circumscribes is a new word for us. And the word, the word circumscribe means simply to draw around. So there is a little bit of new vocabulary there. The circle circumscribes the triangle or it's the circumscribed circle. The triangle is inscribed, or we would call it the inscribed triangle. Now, to construct an inscribed polygon, we're going to retrieve our compass and straight edge. So it says, using our compass and straight edge, construct a regular hexagon inscribed inside of circle O. So let's go ahead and grab your compass and your straight edge. 
I'm going to start this construction by using a line segment to connect the center of my circle, which will always be represented by a dot, with any point on the circle. I'm going to be as exact and as precise as I can when I'm completing this construction. You may say, Mrs. McCann, you just constructed the radius. And you'd be correct, I did draw the radius of that circle. Once I have the radius of my circle, I'm going to take the compass and I'm going to use the compass to measure the radius of the circle. And again, it's more important now than ever before that as you're doing these constructions, you are precise. You're as exact as you can possibly be. So I'm close, but I'm not perfect. I'm going to take my time until I get it right. Once I've measured that radius, what I'm going to do is move the point of my compass until the point of my compass is on that point where the radius intersects the circle. And then I'm going to draw an arc. I'm going to have to flip my compass around in order to make this happen. And I'm going to draw an arc that intersects the circle. I'm going to move the point of my compass to where that arc intersects the circle and draw the next arc. Again, I'll move the point of my compass to where that arc intersects the circle to draw the next arc. And I'm going to repeat this until I've gone all the way around my circle. And we'll talk a little bit more about why this creates a regular hexagon when you come back to class. Something you might want to think about right now, though, and as a hint, it has to do with triangles. So once I've got the six vertices of that hexagon, I'm going to go ahead and use my straight edge to go ahead and connect those six points. It'll give me a regular hexagon. So this is kind of an interesting and fun construction. Kids like to do it because it's very easy and simplistic, and it's kind of neat too at the same time. If you like that construction, you're going to like the next one as well because the equilateral triangle is very, very similar to the hexagon. We're going to approach this exactly the same way by going ahead and drawing the radius, first of all, that connects our center to any point on the circle. And just like we did in the hexagon construction, our next move is going to be to use our compass to measure that radius. And once we've measured that radius, we're going to use our compass to go ahead and construct those six equal arcs all the way around the circle. So again, the hexagon construction and the tri equilateral triangle construction are going to start exactly the same way. The only real difference between these two constructions is that now instead of connecting every single vertex, as I did with a hexagon, I'm simply going to, to connect every other vertex in order to create the triangle. So let me go ahead and finish getting my arcs on there. So again, instead of connecting every point of intersection, we're going to connect every other point. And by doing so, we'll create or construct an equilateral triangle. Again, we'll talk a little bit more about how and why that happens the next time that you come back to class. The last construction that you need to be able to know how to do is the, the inscribed square. This one's a little bit different uh, just because of the nature of the number of its sides. I'm going to start the square by going ahead and drawing any diameter of that circle. And once I construct the diameter of the circle, 
I'm going to go ahead and take those two endpoints of that diameter and I'm going to construct the perpendicular bisector of the segment that connects those two endpoints. So purple, perpendicular bisector is a construction that we know and love. And once I construct that perpendicular bisector, I'll have a second diameter of the circle. And I can go ahead and join all four of those vertices and I'll have a square. Now the how and why this works, we're going to have to wait and explore once we get into a little bit more with our next unit on quadrilaterals. But for now, if you know how to construct the inscribed square, you're going to be in great shape for everything you need to know in this polygons unit. As always, I want to thank you for the gift of your time and ask you to take a few minutes and summarize in your own words the key ideas and important understandings from this lesson. And then see if you can recall how to do those three constructions, the hexagon, the equilateral triangle, and the square.